Thank you very much for uh, allowing me uh, to be here and to give my presentation. My talk is a little bit different compared to uh, the rest of your talks here, uh, which, by the way, are very interesting. I, I just had a quick read over the program, and um, I have to say, I, I just uh, apologize, I cannot be more present, but I have a very tight schedule of work, so I just try to make it fit for my presentation. I'm reading all the interventions and I really find the, the whole webinar very interesting. So uh, today I'm going to talk to you about, um, in, in a certain way, it's food safety too, uh, but it's related to the specific type of uh, um, ketogenic food, which means, uh, uh, you probably have heard of it. Uh, there's a lot of clinical applications on reducing carbohydrate intake, uh, increasing the fat intake, and uh, keeping the proteins at the regular level. Um, everything started back when I was in the United States. I've been working for the U.S. Navy uh, with the Office of Naval Research, which is the section of research belonging to the Navy. Uh, what do these guys do? Actually, they take care of uh, attack mission, defense mission, and uh, um, submarine rescues. Uh, the Office of Naval Research, which is the one uh, uh, reported here in the see in the picture, is the one responsible for the uh, U.S. Navy SEALs' safety. So I used to work in uh, University of South, South Florida in Tampa, Florida. I used to have a, what is called the gas palace. Uh, see all these tanks in this picture? They're basically uh, some gas tanks that we use to reproduce the very harsh environment for Navy SEALs, for the divers. And uh, basically you might probably have heard of it. Uh, there is um, a specific clinical pathology called uh, um, certain nervous system oxygen toxicity, which is basically an excess of oxygen, hyperbaric oxygen in the brain, causing an accumulation of uh, um, reactive oxygen species, uh, free radicals that lead to epilepsy, to, like to epileptic attack seizures. You can have these seizures in two ways. One is through the hyperbaric chamber that you can see on the left picture, or you can use a rebreather like the Navy SEALs uh, during a, a, you know, a military action, a military mission. And because so many of the U US Navy uh, SEALs were having seizures under the water, and so they were dying uh, during missions, uh, the Navy was concerned about it and asked our lab to understand why this was happening and how to avoid this to happen. Just to give you a brief idea, a quick idea of what I'm talking about, this is what happens during a, a Navy SEAL dive breathing pure oxygen. This is a short video that, uh, that represents it. The, the guy on the left is breathing pure oxygen, as you can see, is going to have seizures. Now imagine this setting, not in a hyperbaric chamber, but under the water. Now, this is just an exercise performance. So this guy is going to have seizures, as you can see here. He's going to extend his legs in a second. You will see this guy laying down and having seizures. Now see, he's lo he lost his consciousness, now he's having seizures. He will wake up within three minutes, not remember a single thing, which is okay if you are in a hyperbaric chamber. Nothing happens, nothing changes. It's pretty okay because everything goes back to normal. But when you are in a military mission, you're under, under the water and having this kind of seizures, you're pretty much dead. This is why the Navy SEALs uh, were concerned and, the, you know, the Navy asked us to understand why this, this was happening. So we started working on a specific group of neurons called the solitary complex cardiorespiratory neurons, which are responsible for our breathing processes. And we went from the cells of this solitary complex to the whole animal science. And in particular, we used full animals, uh, spread valley rats, the rats that you can see in this picture. We implanted these rats with the telemetry module and we monitor in these rats during a dive, like with simulation of a dive in a hyperbaric chamber, electroencephalogram, electrocardiogram, electromyogram, body temperature and physical activity. So we wanted to identify which was the physiological parameter happening, like occurring, before, during, and after the onset of these seizures to avoid it. Uh, this is what happens to a rat during a seizure. See, you can see on the right panel, uh, this rat is going to have seizures. So this is what happens in a hyperbaric chamber during a dive in pure oxygen, in hyperbaric oxygen. See, this rat is having seizures. So 
what we wanted to understand was what is the physiological parameter that is going to change telling us that a seizure is going to occur. See, this guy is having a seizure, this little rat. So the paper that came out was back in 2013, the, the take home message was that three to five minutes before the onset of seizures, the rats would breathe, breathe much, free, much more frequently. So the uh, respiratory frequency would be uh, significantly increased. Plus their tidal volume, which is the amount of oxygen they were breathing, which must, was much higher. So two parameters were changing, the amount of oxygen and the times per minute the rats were breathing. When this was going to happen, a seizure would occur within three to five minutes. So this was the very first thing we understood. And then after that, we also wanted to prevent this to happen. So um, we started looking into those things, into those um, features that might help uh, preventing seizures. So we found that there were antioxidants, but in this case, that would be very mild, too mild to have a, a real action. Anti-epileptic drugs, but can you imagine giving a Navy SEALs during a mission anti-epileptic drugs? It's very harsh because these anti-epileptic drugs might have very, very serious uh, um, side effects. But then we actually stopped onto starvation ketosis because starvation ketosis is something that might really help a lot. Specifically, we couldn't give uh, you know, the military Navy SEALs, we couldn't give them a ketogenic diet because a ketogenic diet is hard to follow, especially during a stress period. A ketogenic diet is made up of very low amount of carbohydrate, very, very low, uh, a very high amount of fat and moderate to regular amount of proteins, 20 to 22%. So we couldn't really force the Navy SEALs to have a ketogenic diet during a mission. So because we were working with rats, we didn't uh, put them on a ketogenic diet straight, but we used um, something that we synthesized in the lab, an iron precursor of uh, ketone bodies that was able to put our rats into ketosis without following a ketogenic diet in about 20 to 30 minutes. So we gave them intragastrically into their stomach a little amount of ketone ester, and we would obtain the same level of ketosis that we would obtain with the three-week uh, ketog three, three week long ketogenic diet. But let's go quickly back to what is a ketogenic diet. And how is it easy or hard to sustain? A ketogenic diet is, uh, is made of about 75% of fat, 20% protein, and only 5% carbohydrate. Like the food that you can see in this slide on the right portion of the slide are pretty much what you can eat. So fish, meat, um, like uh, almonds, like nuts, uh, butter, olive oil, eggs, uh, any sort of, uh, you know, uh, bacon and, and, and any of these things. Uh, this has an effect on every organ. These are very, very good uh, outcomes. Uh, what is the optimal level of ketosis? Now, let's keep in mind that we start being into ketosis at 0 0.5 millimolar, but the optimal level of ketosis is in between 2 and 5 millimolar, as you can see in the slide. After 8 millimolar, we start talking about ketoacidosis. So we're not talking about something positive, but it actually is a negative, it's a pathological condition. But usually that never happens if all the organs in the system work well, especially the kidneys. So what are the benefits of keto adaptation? Keto adaptation actually leads us to a number of benefits. Uh, first of all, our central fatigue is decreased. Brain metabolism is enhanced. We are much more concentrated and we can get much longer onto uh, calculations, concentration, and memory, learning, and all, a lot of other processes. I mean, you can, you can look it up online on PubMed. There's so much research done on this topic. We also have a decrease, the reactive oxygen species production if we are on, in, uh, in ketosis. So this is a very good benefit. And this is the main benefit where we would use against seizures. But you also have an increased um, mitochondrial biogenesis. And also we have an increased insulin sensitive, but also less lactate. This is very good for sportsmen, for the sport application. You might think that the ketogenic diet is a very recent application. Actually, it is not at all. It has about 100, it is 100 years old. Imagine that back in 1920, he had the first applications in uh, John Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore in the United States. 
uh, for refractory epilepsy, especially for children. In fact, this article came up in 1922 in uh, Los Angeles, discussing about the potential of a ketogenic diet onto this um, refractory epilepsy, which is a particular type of uh, drug-resistant epilepsy. But it is actually even older than that. If we go back to 400 before Christ, Hippocrates actually described it as a, a way, if you want to talk about it, if, if you want to define it this way, of uh, keeping the possessed people under control. Back in the days, epilepsy was not diagnosed as a pathology. It was just thought that the devil had taken possession of these people's brains. But when they put these possessed people onto isolation and they didn't give them uh, any, any sort of uh, food supply or sugar, they would just uh, automatically and naturally get back to, uh, to normal. So they didn't have any uh, seizures or epileptic attack anymore. So they would be healed. And this, is, this was the way actually the, they defined it. So Hippocrates back in 400 before Christ already discussed about the benefits of ketosis in these people. But if you wanna have more information, I suggest you to go read this uh, uh, very comprehensive review from George Cahill back in 2006. He described what ketosis does to the whole metabolism. But let's go back to our study. We actually had given our rats this uh, ketone ester, which is a precursor, which would actually take and keep these rats onto ketosis without putting them on a ketogenic diet. And uh, what was very interesting is that our rats would resist almost 600% longer against this type of seizures uh, than, than the controls, which gave us the idea of uh, actually boosting onto this topic because putting them on ketosis would neuroprotect them against seizures. We published this paper back in 2013. And we've also found out there was no glucose level change because they, they weren't put on a ketogenic diet, which was the very interesting part. And this action was actually possible thanks to the three ketone bodies that are present, you know, that, that, that exist in Asia, endogenous ketone bodies, which are beta hydroxybutyrate, acetoacetone, and acetone. But mostly acetone was the most responsible of the anti-epileptic uh, effect. Then I got back to Italy after my uh, after a few years in the United States, and I started working with Dr. Coppola and Dr. Bijan, as you can see in this picture. We applied the same method, the ketone ester, on two very uh, well-known methods for studying epilepsy, and we had very good results. We understood that even in, uh, in those two methods, we could obtain a much larger resistance against the epileptic attacks for rats, so we didn't do this on, on humans, but still we had a very good result. And we published two papers on that. So if you want to have more information, you can, uh, you can write me or you can actually look it up on PubMed. Uh, so just to resume it, what are the neuroprotective uh, uh, actions, the neuroprotective actions with, of ketosis? Um, these are just some of them, but actually there are many more. First of all, we can use ketosis on weight loss. As we know, uh, the, in the Atkins diet was proposed many years ago, and it's often used to lose a lot of weight, especially in obese subjects. We have, all, we have also a lot of applications in Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson disease, but also in ALS. Um, it's very important to remember. There's also a lot of applications for ketogenic diet in traumatic brain injury and in glioblastoma, which we know to be one of the most aggressive brain cancers ever existed. And of course, epilepsy, also GLUT1 deficiency, which is another a very important pathology. About epilepsy, I quickly want to introduce this, this, this guy. This is a good friend of mine. One of the very first cases that has been discussed about uh, using ketogenic diet against epilepsy. Mike Dancer, an Englishman, was diagnosed with um, uh, epilepsy uh, at the age of 34. He used to have a lot of medications for four years. Then at the age of 38, he decided to stop because these medications had a lot of side effects. He, he lost his appetite, he, he had sexual troubles, he, you know, he couldn't sleep anymore. So he decided to stop his medication. So the neurologist that had him in care told him that he, if he would have uh, interrupted his medications, he would have died in six months. Well, he stopped anyway and uh, started being on a ketogenic diet. He was very well informed about the benefits of ketosis. 
I got to tell you, it's not been six months. It's been uh, over 11 years that Mike is alive and didn't have a single attack of epilepsy in 11 years. He's been on a keto, ketogenic diet. He's been in ketosis, regular ketosis, straight on for over 11 years. And this is one of the thousand cases, dozen thousand cases that exist in the world following a ketogenic diet with success. Uh, so my story, back to my story, I, went, I came back to Italy from the United States and started collaborating with um, a number of nutritionists, a number of um, you know, ketogenic product producers uh, to help people follow a ketogenic diet because I understood there were so many benefits. I wanted people to know that they might, you know, take care of their pathologies through a diet, just a simple diet. But it's hard to follow a ketogenic diet, especially here in Italy where we love pizza, pasta, and desserts, you know? So how can we do it? Just replacing uh, you know, uh, grains and um, refined sugar with some other products that look like them, but have different properties. And uh, I found them specifically in this uh, company that produces uh, this type of food and is good is to keep ketosis in these patients. Uh, then I, I've been putting out a lot of videos on YouTube informing people on mm, the benefits of ketosis in everyday life. You don't have to be, um, you know, fat or having diabetes, diabetes type 2, or you don't have to have a specific pathology. Ketosis is good anyway. I've tried, I tried that on myself at least twice a year, and it clears my mind. It clears my body. It detoxifies mm, myself. It's just, it's just fantastic. I, I feel much better when I do it. I've been publishing a few papers, a few reviews discussing about the good potentials of ketogenic diet in a lot of scenarios. And uh, uh, with this company, we've been pushing very hard to have these products available for everybody by the uh, National uh, Health Ministry for, uh, for the patients. And we, and we got this authorization now. Briefly, I just want to discuss about a few uh, cancer cases that I've been um, mm, taking care of myself. Um, these people, very, very briefly, I'm just going to give you a few information about them. Uh, this first uh, case study, Marco, 63 years old, he, he had uh, prostate cancer um, with metastasis in the ribs. Uh, he was put on a 3 to 1 ketogenic diet, which is a mild ketogenic diet, is not too strict. And um, uh, his uh, PSA, which is a prostate specific antigen, went from 1.62 to 1. He's been on a over two years on a ketogenic diet and his PSA stayed below one. So this is having a good effect. On top of that, he didn't do any radiotherapy and his PET scan revealed that there is no evidence of cancer recurrence. Um, case number two, Mario, 63 years old, uh, he had the pancreatic cancer. He was put on a strict ketogenic diet for the one and uh, his cancer antigen went from 43.69 units per ml uh, to, to uh, 9 to 84 in only six months, which means that he's been on a, on a ketogenic diet for two and a half years. He doesn't have any cancer recurrence at the moment. Now, I'm just presenting you the most emblematic cases. There are so many that, you know, haven't been following ketogenic diet from the beginning to the end. So we cannot really talk about ketogenic diet in these cases. Patient number three, he uh, is 47 years old is to have a, a high, second high-grade glial, glial lesions, was put on a ketogenic diet, very strict ketogenic diet, and uh, he was uh, helped to keep his compliance through the products I showed you. Uh, he had um, a uh, magnetic resonance uh, after nine months. He had a reduction of glial lesions, tumor mass, and the edema. Uh, Matteo, he had um, colon edema carcinoma, colon cancer. Uh, he was put on a 4 to 1 ketogenic diet. Uh, again, he had a very good uh, reduction of adenocarcinoma carcinoma lesions. But we also have some cases of glycogenosis, uh, like uh, Luca, this, this guy, 25 years old. After a ketogenic diet, he was able to go back to work and exercising and didn't have any spasm or pain anymore. And finally, uh, Giancarlo, this guy, glioblastoma multiforme, as we know, as I, as, as I told you before, is one of the most aggressive brain cancer form. It was put on a strict to one, uh, a very, very strict four to one ketogenic diet. And after um, eight months, there was no evidence of tumor mass. Of course, these people need to stay 
on a ketogenic diet. As they go out, there is risk of cancer recurrence. This is the downside. Um, in Italy, we're very sensitive to ketosis. This is why, uh, thanks to Professor Talia Bua, every year, um, we organize a specific course for uh, uh, registered dietitians to apply ketogenic diet uh, in patients for a number of problems. And we organize this every year. Uh, but I want to discuss the very last thing, and then I'm pretty much done, about Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is uh, a very harsh disease, and this is why ketosis hasn't been really much studied on Parkinson. Uh, what we know about it is that the ketogenic diet and ketosis, um, together with uh, caloric restriction, is able to um, fight against the neurotoxin MPTP, which is responsible for the uh, Parkinson's disease activity. Uh, we know this by a number of papers that I'm just showing you here. They pretty much say the same thing, uh, some clinical cases. Uh, so what, what, what did we do? Uh, we decided to take a pool of a stage one patient. This is an ongoing study. So this study is right now going on. And uh, we put them on a ketogenic diet to see if it had any beneficial effects over a three month period. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the team I've been working with. Uh, what did we study uh, exactly? Uh, speaking abilities of these patients, facial expressions, general tremor, rigidity, posture, uh, leg agility, the way they sit up, uh, the, the way they sit down and they, they um, stand up, um, and, though, and especially autonomic dysfunction, sleep troubles, neuropsychiatric disturbances, and uh, respiratory troubles, the way they fall, the way they feel pain, and all these kind of things. Um, Especially, we've been using a number of tests like the G-Walk test, Time Up and Go, and the 10 meter walking test. This is a very specific test for Parkinson's disease patients. Um, and we have been studying, we will be studying because this study is going on. It's been only one month that it got started, but it will end up in two months. Uh, we started we're working with their uh, minimal state examination, with their, their memory, their learning approaches, uh, their uh, way of speaking, so the, the phonemic fluency, the semantic fluency, um, and all the logics that they, that they use. Just to give you uh, an example, this is a video that shows uh, uh, pretty much their memory test. So as you can see here, uh, they have to remember a specific uh, pattern or a path they have to reproduce. Um, some shapes, some uh, see like uh, like squares of crosses. They have to remember what the physician mm -hmm. is suggesting them. So they need to uh, remember the exact path. Then the data are analyzed through uh, this device and put on a computer. And uh, um, you know, and, and and we will need to analyze all this data later on. But. Uh, going on, what we need to assess is the cognitive performances, the cognitive decline, their motor conditions and their non-motor conditions, even their mood. We actually are very confident this study will be, um, will be important in the field for Parkinson's disease because there was this study published back in March 2018 in New Zealand. Uh, thanks to which Dr. Phillips uh, put uh, 47 patients uh, on a ketogenic diet. Only 38 completed the study, but still a good number of people. For two, um, actually for, uh, for eight weeks, sorry, for eight weeks, so two months. Um, the benefits were a lot, like uh, they had decrease in urinary problems. No, I mean, a very good improvement for pain, for fatigue. They didn't have any daytime sleepiness anymore and they were able to have a, um, an empowerment of the cognitive function. Um, also, thanks to the study, it has been demonstrated that ketogenic diet is safe to be followed, to be you know, administered for a period of over uh, two months. Um, and um, actually there were good improvements in non-motor and in, in motor symptoms. So what we have found so far in our study in agreement with this study is that the urinary problems are, impaired, are actually improved. So we have the same outcome, which makes make us think that this is a very good uh, approach. Uh, we also organize a lot of uh, social activities for uh, Parkinson's patients uh, on a yearly basis, not this year because of course of uh, coronavirus, we couldn't organize this uh, for 2020, but 
we did this for all past years and uh, they're very much appreciated by the patients. So our next step now is to synthesize the ketone ester or ketone salts and to give these patients without letting them follow a ketogenic diet to have the best neuroprotective uh, you know, effects of uh, ketosis without having the issue of uh, taking off carbohydrates. This is our next step, but this is probably going to happen within years, I hope. Um, very quickly, just want to thank the Italian Glut 1 Deficit Association, which is, uh, we have been partnering uh, a lot. And uh, as now for Glut 1 deficiency, ketogenic diet is considered the first line of intervention, therapy intervention. Uh, also, rareconet.org that I strongly uh, invite you to go check. In case of rare disease, this, this actually website is able to connect people and, uh, you know, getting them together to fight against the uh, that specific uh, pathology. Uh, Dr. Cusano, I've been working with a lot of number and high number of different cases with the ketogenic diet. And last thing I want to um, uh, introduce to you is uh, if you're interested in ketogenic diet into ketosis, I strongly suggest you to watch this, these movies like Fed Up. It's an American movie talking about how bad sugar can be for our health. Uh, that sugar film, which is an Australian movie um, back in 2015, this is a a very emblematic movie because the the main character actually uh, tries having a high carbohydrate diet on himself and sees how what I mean destroying uh, consequences are on his body. Uh, the Magic Pill is another American movie back in 2017, which is it is very interesting to know how uh, you know the quality of food is important, especially in the United States. And last but not least, this is a very homemade movie, but made me reflect, made me think a lot. Butter Makes My Pants Fall Off explains how when someone who is very big, is very fat, is on a high fat diet, can lose a lot of weight. Like in this case, I strongly invite you to go check them on Google. You will find them some, uh, you know, videos and just go check and, and then you will have an idea what I'm talking about. Uh, thank you to my colleagues, all of them. I just don't want to waste more time. Just want to thank uh, all my old fellas, uh, uh, love fellas. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, 